From Las Vegas, Nevada, it's Pete Allman's Celebrity Scene News, covering Hollywood, Las Vegas celebrities, sports, and hot news. Now, here's your man on the scene, Pete Allman. For this, and this man, uh, all he was supposed to do was introduce me, which is a very simple thing. And George gave you for free. So I think if we can all just give. Did you ever make a movie? I've done some movies, yes, sir. Did you ever have a stunt person do a. Uh, Run and do something for you? No, I. I didn't well, do see you. that. <laughs> you never did anything for George, and George did all this for you for free. Yeah. And George brought his hat. He's going around every table. <laughs> and would you all please put some money in there before you you go out and lose it anyway? Right? Oh, exactly right. But don't tell how much you put in that because his manager is here and he'll want 25 <laughs> thank you George I was not at any rehearsal I am here because of my relationship <coughs> with Calvin Brown. Yeah! <laughs> no, Calvin is not that. <laughs> Calvin is not that. But if you all just stop talking one sec and hear this. Somewhere in 1960 something or other, I got a job in a TV series called I Spy. Yeah. And, and I do not jump. I, don't, I have nothing to prove. And this script called for um, my character to be driving a car. And something happened in the car. They wanted the car to do a one and a half or something. <laughs> And I didn't, at that time, I knew nothing about making movies. So I told the guy, I said, look, I'm, obviously I'm, I'm not driving. I don't even know how to do a one. <laughs> he said, oh, don't worry, we have a stuntman. This is 1960-something or other. First year of I Spy. And uh, it was a day scene. And to my horror, I saw a man with my character's outfit on, a white man. And they were putting, not even close, <laughs> not even close, I mean pure D black. <laughs> so that even his lips looked red and nostrils that were, were, were ruby all around the eyelids and he did not look and then they put a wig on this man obviously Clara Ward's hairdresser sent it out of her son. And they put it on him, and then they began to cut it. <coughs> they put that man in the car, did his hands, and his nails didn't look right. I mean, they just painted him black. I said to myself, why didn't they just tow it? <laughs> didn't see who it was. And this cat went, poor ass, zoop, and a boom, one and a half, and bam. And everybody applauded. <laughs> and uh, he said, would you like to meet? I said, yeah. I went over. I said, well, thank you very much. And I went over to Sheldon later. I said, Sheldon, I don't want this to happen again. 
She said, well, I don't, what, 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 what do you need to bring a problem? I said, yeah, I'm only a year and something in this business. I grew up with some guys in the projects. How much did you pay this man? It was a seven hundred fifty dollars. I said, I know some cats in the projects. Well, do that for seventy dollars. <laughs> I said, don't ever again, please, please, take a white man and put him in my position. You can find somebody. I, I, I there's got to be. If I hadn't gotten into comedy, you could have found me <laughs> for seven hundred fifty dollars. She only got one life to live. Paralyzed, seven hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> and so they brought me this man, Calvin Brown. Calvin Brown. And Calvin looked at me, and he's taller than I am, and uh, went to Grammar, Eddie Roberts. I played for Temple. And Calvin did everything I was supposed to do. Every jump, every from a helicopter, all of that stuff. In those days, this this man. It was the beginning, I believe. And Paul Stater, I think, was that his name, Calvin? Yes. Yeah. Paul Stater, he's teaching boxing, and Calvin had to deal with them. Had to deal with them. And positions and times when. Sometimes they would even ask, well, why, ask why, why, why do you want to be in the business? We, we're doing Calvin, Pioneer. What's my man's name, Calvin? Well, I used to call him Rev. He was, he, he was a reverend, I think. Eddie Is he still alive? No. Oh, no. Well, let me tell you about it. <laughs> Everybody who knows Eddie knows that Eddie had a little game. Eddie had a little game. Everything is a smile and what well, you do, he he. Say, Bob Pitt said he he, what a he. Say, Eddie, yeah, he he. And Eddie was in charge. Or rather, in charge. Because he's from the South. He's in charge. And we did this uh, Chet Kincaid thing. I don't know where you were, Calvin, but. Oh, it wasn't. I wasn't the, 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 the person. And I had written this thing about running track and how rigor mortis will hit you when you run the 440, will get you around the 300 mile. And I had them dress Eddie. Eddie's going to get a bump for this. And we put Eddie in a white suit. And, you know, a stunt man's nemesis and a stunt woman's nemesis is the, the, what do you call them, Calvin? The catch, the, that have the guns and blow things up and do all Special that. effects. Special effects. Special effects kill more snuck men than the fall. And then they walk around and look at the spot. Well, it was supposed to. It wasn't supposed to blow up that way. Why do you the stuck man on the way to the hospital? Man? No, don't you rehearse these things in your backyard or something? So anyway, Eddie, to, to be old and the director I forget his name. So anyway, he's holding a flash pot. It says, now Eddie, you are a rigor mortis. And when Bill goes running by, the flash pot will go off. And you will smile. 